where a society gone chaotic. Where a society gone chaotic. Now, how do we get it back? When everything over circuits, it shuts down. No electricity, no power. So you have to go down into the basement and find the electrical box and reset the button. We need to reset society. We have created a separate society, totally detached from personal responsibility. The young males are growing up without any parental influence, particularly fathers in their lives. There's not a culture of discipline. And if you go up without it, then it just escalates. Children raising children, dysfunctionalness, breeding dysfunctionalness. When people feel there's an absence of content and meaning in their lives, these get acted out. He's producing babies, but he's not fathering them. He's in relationships, but he'll never become a husband. It is a tragedy that a young girl will make love and won't protect herself. And some of them plan for it. They're planning their whole life around a whole set of entitlements that they are keenly aware of. And when you sit down and talk with them, they have no earthly understanding why. Social policies of the 60s, accompanied by moral deregulation, it was a lethal cocktail. And their sole purpose was to recruit people away from the, uh, the, the work economy into the welfare economy. So you saw a dramatic increase in the number of people leaving families for welfare. Someone once said that if you condition someone to enter into the back door, even if there isn't a back door, you will insist that they build one. Well, nothing is more crippling and disabling to someone than to convince them that they are an agent of somebody else's goodwill. And that has just really detached people from the standards that defines a healthy and wholesome life. So the fantasy it has become the reality, and the reality has become the fantasy. So you hope to see a husband and a wife, you know, go to school, graduate, come together, get married and have the baby. That's the abnormal, not the norm. And until we go into the neighborhoods, they only have themselves, the blind leading the blind. What Shirley does is she brings people in. She recognizes that once a person is an addict, the whole family is addicted. And so she welcomes not only individuals, but families into her ministry. I came here to a domestic violence situation, and we were moved from hotel to hotel. Well, all of a sudden, one day I was lying in my bed, and I just started hearing voices coming to me, saying to me to kill myself. She gives them an opportunity to remove those demonic forces in their life and replacing with something that causes them to walk in a new light. I wanted a change in my life. I wanted to make things better for her because I didn't want to lose her. In order to give hope to people, you gotta first give help. As Cesar Chavez once said, feed the people, then ask questions. So she feeds the person, and then she satisfied that deeper need that they have for meaning in their lives. She showed us so much love and so much understanding that we have never received before. And she provides a context for that to happen. She provides a place for them to physically live. She provides a series of relationships that surround the person. And these relationships are from people who are witnesses themselves that transformation is possible. Our bond was being homeless. Heroin was a totally different story. And I was trying to medicate the pain. We sitting there with 12 people with machine guns. They're sitting there with 12 people with machine guns. And we're sitting there looking at each other like who's going to try to do who. Real love says, let me show you how to survive. Let me show you how to make it. Let me show you how to be happy. Let me show you how to do this. 
I mean, for somebody to take me in and don't know me and treat me like a son. Day by day, I started seeing change in me. You know, the whole time I was working, I would come home and I would give her my checks. And I told her to use them how she wanted to, however she needed to do to feed the people or whatever, because I was living there. She saved all my money. So me and my wife, when we got married, we were able to get rings. We were able to have our wedding. People are not treated as a client. We deal with potential. Mm -hmm. That's what I look for. What is your potential? That's right. Not your performance. Right. But what is that potential in you that's untapped? God used her to break uh, a hardness off of my mind, off of my heart. I was very nasty. You, you, you better not have said nothing out the way to me. I mean that literally. You better not have said nothing out the way to me. Dignity is bestowed upon a person when there is reciprocity. What Shirley does is help restore people by convincing them that they have got a contribution to make to others. I share with them where I came from, what I went through. I don't care if it's on Capitol Hill to underneath a bridge. A lot of girls I see that come in here with domestic violence, they're crying. They're crying. And the only thing I can do is hug them. You need someone to talk to? I'm here because I've been through it. You know, I've been through it where I've lost everything, but I've gained it back. That enables them to live a healthy and wholesome and productive life. I miss you so much. I've been through from hotel to hotel. Through hospital, hospital. But I know that I'm here for a reason, and that nobody can stop me. The largest, the most diseased part of the body draws the strongest antibodies. So let's put the money where it works. Let's not keep doing what we've been doing because we know it doesn't work. We know the food stamp system doesn't work. Does it help some people? Yes, it does. But we are talking about the inordinate of amounts of people that it doesn't help. So now you have to revamp it because what worked 50 years ago doesn't work now. And so you put uh, resources behind solutions that do work. The problem is the money is not going into the places that it should. The very fact that it's such a controversy now, and such it's getting so bad, it means that there's going to be a backlash against it. Only the backlash is going to be an innovative, independent cure that comes from the people suffering the problem. You have to have solutions that work. Don't give a man a fish, teach him how to fish. That's what I did at Gracepew. It used to be drug dealers. It used to be heroin addicts. Every builder sold something. And when I got there, I kept breeding positiveness. And as I started speaking it and started fixing up the property, I started working with the people. You're staying on welfare and not going to get a job. That's not acceptable. We give you the pieces that you need, and then we move you on monitor you, and we keep taking them in. And that's the only way you're gonna be able to get rid of the cancer. We are gonna really abandon 50 years of failed policy to embrace a whole new paradigm of helping the poor where the people who are suffering the problem are the centerpiece of this renewed regeneration. And as you keep applying the chemotherapy, you keep applying it until all the cancer cells are gone. Now, the abnormal becomes the normal, and what was normal becomes abnormal. And we as Americans, we should provide that. What's a life worth?